In this video, I'm going to help you to understand and implement landmark matching in the match game. I'll start with the template code that you are given for the match game. This already has example code to match animals, so I'll explain this and show you how to use it as the basis of a function to match landmarks. Let's get started with that now. This video assumes that you've created a computer vision API key on the Microsoft Cognitive Services site. You'll need this key in order to run the code. If we go to the editor window on the AI gaming site and select match game as our game type, we can create a new file using the Microsoft API template. This gives us a code solution for the match game that already has an example of using the Microsoft Cognitive API to identify animals in images. We can use this example to understand how to identify landmarks. Make sure you have entered your Microsoft Computer Vision API key at the top of the file first, and then we'll scroll down or search for the Analyze Tile function. This is the function where we use the Microsoft Cognitive API to analyze the tile image and where we determine if the image is an animal, a landmark, or some text. The analyze tile function receives a tile parameter which contains the URL of the image that we want to analyze and the location of the tile on the board. We first make a quick check to see if we've analyzed this tile already, then, we start to create the Microsoft Cognitive API call that we'll use to analyze the contents of the tiles image. First, we set our API URL to say that we want to use the Analyze API function by adding the Analyze function to the end of it. Next, we specify the visual features that we want the Analyze function to tell us about, like faces or color or categories. In our code, We've asked it to tell us about everything that the Microsoft Cognitive API can search for, so you can see examples of all of the information it can provide. Finally, we set the data that we want the function to analyze, which is the URL of the tile image. So, we've set the API call to use its analyze function. We've made a list of the features we want it to report back to us, and we've identified the image that we want it to analyze. Now, we can call the Microsoft Cognitive API to analyze the image and return a JSON object telling us about the visual features we asked it for. We can see an example of the JSON that the Microsoft Cognitive API returned here. It has sections for each of the visual features that we asked it for. Categories, adult information, color information, etc. With this response, we can determine if the tile is an animal, a landmark, or some text. And we do that next, starting with a check to see if the response from the Microsoft Cognitive API contains any information about animals in the image. You can see here that we send the API response to a check for animal function. It's this check for animal function that we will use as an example to create our new check for landmark function. If we scroll down or search for that check for animal function, we can see what it does. Firstly, we set up a subject variable. This will be the result of the function, a text string that is the subject of the image. Then we use a loop to search through all of the tags in the tags section of the response JSON. We sort the list of tags into confidence order here. Each tag is checked to see if it contains a name field, and if it does, we check if the value of the name field exists in the list of animals that we are interested in. Let's look at that in the JSON from our example response. Our code takes the tags section of the JSON and looks for each name field. If we scroll down to the tags section that our code searches through, we can then see all of the name fields. This is what our code is searching through to see if any entry is one of the animals we are looking for. Each tag has a confidence value and we make sure that our loop sorts the tags into confidence order when we search through them. If a tag's name value matches one of the animals in our game's list of animals, 
Then we have a match and we record the contents of the name field as our subject. We convert it to lowercase to make comparisons easier later on. Finally, we print the subject so that we can see the results in the information column of the editor page. And then we break out of the loop that's checking for each tag as we now have a match and we return the subject back to our call to check for animal. We can see that if the result of calling check for animal contains a value, we have a successful result and we set the state of the tile to analyzed and we store the subject of the tile. If our check for animal function had not found an animal in the tag fields, the result of the check for animal function would have been none and we would have moved on to the check for landmark function. If we scroll down to the check for landmark function, we can see that this function exists, but only as a placeholder. It always returns none as its result. We need to fill in the logic to analyze the image like we've just seen in the check for animal function, and then search the JSON result for any landmark information. We need to write the equivalent of the for loop that was in the check for animal function. So as a starting point, let's copy the for loop from the check for animal function and paste it above our return statement. To modify the check for animals code to search for landmarks, we need to know where the landmark information exists in the Microsoft Cognitive API response. You can see in the comments at the start of the check for landmarks function, we've told you exactly where you can find the landmark information. We need to update the code that we've pasted in from the check for animals function to search in this location. Our for loop needs to let us search through each category section that is returned. The categories themselves don't have a confidence value, so we can simplify the for statement and make it look at categories by changing it to the following. Then, if we look at our comment to see where the landmark information is, we can see that for each category, we have to check, firstly, if that category contains a detail section, if that detail section contains a landmarks section, and if that landmark section contains a value. We can change the first line in the for loop to do this. If all of these conditions are true, then we know that the Microsoft Cognitive API response has identified a landmark and we can record the landmark name as our subject. We can do this by updating the next line. The next line prints this value out, so let's update it to tell us that this is a landmark, not an animal. And finally, we can break out of the loop now that we have found the information that we want and return the value to our calling function analyze tile. If we return to this call, we can see that just like it did when we checked for animal, if the result is not none, we mark the tile as analyzed and record the landmark subject. If we run the code now, we can see that the game successfully matches landmarks when it comes across them. We've now successfully added a check to identify images that have landmarks in them. If we carry on from this, then if we didn't find a landmark, our code would then need to check the tiles image to see if it contains text. We've added some comments to the template code to give you some pointers on how you would go about doing this. That's it. We've now successfully added a check to identify images that have landmarks in them. Your next step after this would be to check for text images if we have not been able to find an animal or a landmark. There are more videos in this series, so please check them out.